We won't sing a song for you. We won't try to sing a song for you. I'm a preacher, but I'm not a singer. And most of the time I sound like a hoot out on post nasal trip. <laughs> we will try to get through it anyway if we can. A lot of times when I think about my dad and think about all he's been through, it kind of reminds me of Job. Some of the things Job went through. So we're going to sing a song about Job. Hope we can get through it. <clears throat> As the sun rose that morning on the day of Job's trial, he rose up to serve God as any other day. He was bound and determined to live in God's favor, and nothing would stand in his way. Then the messengers came one by one with their stories. Just a few moments. Job lost all he had. From great wealth and riches, the health of his body, and even his children were dead. The Lord giveth, he taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I served him before and I serve him today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God and die. Job rose from the ashes and looked toward the heavens and brushed back the tears from his eyes. He said, The Lord give it, he take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I served him before and I serve him today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When the storm winds blow violently, blessed be the name. When Satan comes oppressing me, blessed be the name. I'll still serve God faithfully, blessed be the name. The Lord giveth, he taketh away, blessed be the name of the
in almost 46 years seeing my dad cry. The first time I remember seeing my dad cry was when him and my mom broke up. And the second time I remember seeing my dad cry was at my Uncle Melvin's funeral. Now I'm sure he cried at other funerals. My Uncle Lenny passed and my grandmother my Uncle Lenny passed, but Uncle Melvin was the first death in our family and I really tore him up. And I, I'm sure he cried at other ones, but I specifically remember seeing him cry at my Uncle Melvin's funeral. I'll tell you about the third time I remember seeing my dad cry at the end. But the fourth time I remember seeing my dad cry was when he dropped me off at the recruiter, recruiting station in Greenville to be shipped off to boot camp. When I was fixing to graduate high school, I asked my dad, I said, Dad, you gonna help me out sending me to school next year or send me to college somewhere, community college or something? He said, boy, you know I ain't got that kind of money to send you to school. I said, well, Dad, you have 18 years to prepare for this. He said, son, I never thought you were going to graduate. <laughs> My dad said, the only thing I passed was White's Cross. Got <laughs> a co in Windsor. So off I went to the Navy. One of the best things that ever happened to me. And when he dropped me off, I, and he was crying. I don't know if those were tears of sorrow or joy. <laughs> Because the way I was before I got right with the Lord, I'm sure he didn't ever think I'd amount to a whole lot. And I know he's mighty proud of me for joining the military, staying in the military for 20 years, and that's why I wanted to honor him today by wearing my uniform. I've been retired for almost eight years, but I wanted to honor him today. The fifth time I remember seeing my dad cry was when I got married and he stood in for uh, to be my best man. Now I want to tell you about the third time. When I was a member of Coleman Baptist Church, and my life was not going in a very good direction. And we had an evangelistic group come preach for us. They were called the Light Bears. And I ended up getting under conviction. And they were talking about how the drugs didn't satisfy them, drinking didn't satisfy them. And I ended up getting in conviction. And I knew what they had it, I needed it. And they gave the invitation, and I walked down. We got right on that altar, right on that, right in front of the church. And I, I responded and wanted to accept Jesus as my Savior. I said yes to Jesus. I said yes, I need you, Jesus. I can't save myself. I need you to save me, Jesus. And I responded. And I got up off of that altar and I was walking back. And I looked and my dad had saw me get up out of my seat and go down. And he couldn't have me. He had no hand he had. Wiping the tears out of his eyes. Because he knew that the Lord had spoken to the heart. And he knew I needed it. He knew I needed it. And what a blessing it was, probably 20 years later, when I was a member of Texas Baptist Church in San Antonio, and he came and visited. And the preacher preached a real powerful message. And I looked and saw my dad walking down to the altar to get reassurance of this salvation. I was wiping the tears out of my eyes. Amen. I'm so glad he got reassurance. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, salvation is a one and done deal. The Bible talks about it said a man be born again. He should not see the kingdom of God. You have to have a spiritual birth. And once you have that spiritual birth, it's one and done. Once you're saved, you're always saved. You don't need to get re-saved. You can't get re-saved. It's only one time deal, but there's nothing wrong with getting reassurance. There's nothing wrong with just double checking it and getting it nailed down. And I'm so glad that I don't have to say we lost my daddy. Don't have to say we lost him because I know exactly where he is. From personal conversations with him and praying with him before major surgeries, I know exactly where he is. And my dad's CB handle was Bobcat. That's what we call them. We used to like track bobcats years and years ago. And if you were to get a radio check with my dad, and you were to say, how about your old bobcat? Come in, bobcat. How about your old bobcat? He'd tell you he'd go better than that, right, man? He would. He wouldn't come back. He could. But I asked my dad years ago. I asked him. I said, Dad, would you like for me to give people the opportunity your funeral. 
Would you like me to give people the opportunity to get reassurance or assurance of their salvation? And he said he would. And I'm not going to ask anybody to walk an aisle. I'm not going to twist anybody's arm. I'm going to be using high pressure tactics or anything like that. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. But I do like to give a few Bible verses like my dad wanted me to. Maybe to someone here is not 100% sure if they died and they go to heaven. And I just want to take just a few minutes just to give you a few Bible verses to tell you how you can be 100% sure. And your Bible says in John chapter 5, verse number 13, These things are written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. I'm sorry. That you may know that you have everlasting life and you may believe on the name of the Son of God. The Bible says that we can know we're going to heaven. We don't have to hope. We don't have to wonder. We can know for sure how to go to heaven. And it tells us twice in that verse now. Believe. Believe on the name of the Son of God. That's Jesus. And that is the crystal clear message of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation that all a person has to do to go to heaven is believe in Jesus. Now there is some confusion around surrounding the word belief. What it actually means. You can believe in Jesus all day long like the like Santa Claus and the two fairy or Easter buddy had him get you the King James Bible actually defines what belief means and it's trust. So in order to go to heaven, you have to take your trust out of yourself, your good works, your church membership, your baptism, whatever it is you trust in, in the blood of Jesus. You've got to take your trust, all your faith, and your trust and put it in Jesus. You can have faith the size of a mustard seed to get you to heaven, but it's all in Jesus, not in yourself. See, we don't go to heaven on what we do, we go to heaven on what He did. And there's just a few things you have to realize, a few things you have to understand to put your faith and trust in Jesus. And the first thing you've got to understand is we're all sinners. The Bible says we're all of sin and we're short of the Word of God. Sin is when we break God's commandments and every single one of us are guilty of that. The second thing you should understand is what the penalty for our sin is. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. So because we're sinners, we're all going to die. Adam and Eve will live forever if they had to, if sin would have come into picture. Because we're sinners, we're all going to die. When you die, it's heaven or hell. There is no purgatory. There is no home tank. It's heaven or hell. But the good news is no one has to go to hell. The Bible says God offers us a gift. He said, the gift of God is eternal life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. But we need to emphasize it's a gift. And the reason why it's a gift is because Jesus paid for it. And we couldn't. The Bible says we're not saved by works, lest any man should boast. If I could work my way into heaven and I'd go up in heaven, I'd be sure I'd like George Jefferson. Pat myself on the back, look how good I am. I did this, I did that. And Jesus would be over in the corner. He'd say, hey, Hoss, what about me? I'm going to get you here. You didn't get yourself here. So we got to understand it's a gift. It's free because Jesus paid for it on the cross. It's not by works. The gift of God's eternal life. And once we receive that gift, that means it lasts forever. If you could commit some type of sin and God would take it from you a month later, it wasn't eternal, it was temporary. We have eternal life because it's not about us. It's about trusting in Jesus and what He did. Also, the gift of God's eternal life. And then it says in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised thee from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So a person's got to understand it's free. Only Jesus can save us, not ourselves, not our religion, denomination, works, anything. It's all about Jesus. A person's got to understand that. And a person's got to understand that Jesus is Lord. Thou shalt confess by mouth the Lord Jesus. Lord means boss. That means he's the master. He's the, he's the, he's the boss. He's the only one who can save us. He's not a way, he's the way. He's the way. And we have to realize that and we have to understand and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ rose from the grave on the third day. That's how we know Jesus is the Lord. That's how we know Jesus is the boss because when He come up out of that grave, He proved He was the only way. We serve a risen Savior. So you have to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. He was buried. He rose again on the third day. And then Romans 10, 13, last verse, I'm done. says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So maybe there's someone here this afternoon is not 100% sure. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to pray a prayer. Just a little silent prayer. If you're not sure, I want you to be knowing where you be going. I want you to be knowing where you be going. I want you, hey, you, obviously you love my dad, you're here, you respect my dad, I want you to see him again one day. I'm going to see him. I'm not going to see him because I deserve to go to heaven. 
I'm only going to sin because I humbled myself and, and asked Jesus and accepted Him as my Savior. If you've never done that, then give you an opportunity to do it right now. Quietly, with heads bowed, eyes closed. If you're not 100% sure, or well, maybe you are sure, but you'd like to get reassurance, I, I, I invite you to pray this prayer silently in your heart. Say, Dear Jesus, the best way that I know how, I open up my heart and I accept you as my Savior. I'm trusting only in you, Jesus, and not my works. Please save me. Please forgive me. Thank you for giving me eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen.